Suppose we have a list of people's names and ages, and we'd like to print out each person's name and age side by side. One possible way to do this in Python is to write a for loop that iterates over the integer indices, accesses each element individually, and then prints out the name and age. This works, but it isn't ideal. Our code is a bit cumbersome since we have to create this temporary integer sequence in order to access the elements in each list, and it's also more verbose than it needs to be. Let's improve it by using the zip function. Simply put, zip is a built-in Python function that generates a sequence of tuples starting with the first elements from each input list, then the second elements, third elements, and so on. In our example, if we pass a list of names and ages into zip, zip builds a sequence of tuples that contain both the name and age. So, if we replace our iteration logic with zip, not only does our code become more compact, but it's easier to read as well. But let's not stop there. Say we want to take our code a step further and print each person's favorite color next to their name and age. What's nice about zip is that it can also handle any number of input lists. So all we need to do is pass colors into zip and then add color into the print statement. There's also one more feature of zip that many Python developers don't know about but should. Imagine we add a person and accidentally forget to add their age. By default, zip iterates up until the last element of the shortest list it receives, so while the program will run, we might not realize we've missed the last person. Thankfully, zip also takes an argument called strict, which if true, raises an exception if the lists passed into zip are of different lengths. This is a good defensive coding practice and can be helpful for catching bugs early on. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.